welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation about something that's hopefully mundane for you. And you can just feel free to drift off and find yourself to sleep. Whatever is going through your mind right now, just push it aside for these next 26 minutes as we talk about something that I just did recently on this weekend. Thank you for listening. This is Marco Timpano. This is Amanda. I don't know. I, lo- I don't know if I agree with pushing it aside. I'm kind of caught placing it aside, allowing it to sit and be fine where it lives. There you go. And to go to a different place for 26 minutes. Okay, cool. Well, I'll tell you, I did something for more than 26 minutes the last few days, Amanda. Work. I stained the deck. Oh, yes. I had to first prep the deck. So we have in our backyard, it's all deck. Mm -hmm. In other words, we live in the city, so we don't have a large backyard. And we chose to do a wood deck back there, Mm -hmm. which is great. I don't even know if you'd call it a yard, a space. A backspace. A backspace. (laughs) It's true. I don't know if you can call it a yard if there's no yard to call it a yard. It's true. And a reminder that we say yard, but um, on House Hunters International, everybody says garden, because I think that's the British way to say yard. Well, yeah. it's our backyard is how we say it in North America, I guess. So our yeah, back but they'll garden. say, let's check out the garden. And then they look around and you're like, what garden? It's just a patch of green. But to them, that's a garden. So I think this is what I've learned by watching copious amounts of House Hunters International. You like to watch that when you're... On the exercise. On the treadmill. On the treadmill, yeah. What were you going to call it? The exercise machine? I was going to call it the exercise bike. That's what I'm on when Mm. you're on the treadmill. It's the perfect show for a treadmill because I care enough, but not too much. It happens in four sections. So I know if I haven't broken a sweat by this section, then I, you know, and I, I know exactly what the chunks are. It's a very methodical, easy show. It's actually one we use to help us sleep sometimes. It's true. It's true. So I prepped the deck, Amanda. Mm -hmm. I bought a wash and I bought a power washer because we didn't have one. And uh, I was like, you know what? I should get a power washer. And one And how did it help? Because I, dear friends, he did it all by himself. I did not help at all. So how was the power washer? It was great, actually. Was it satisfying? Well, I don't know if satisfying is the word because you often get wet. Like, it's not like the power washer power washes the grime from the wood and you stay dry there's spray water spray everywhere and um, I actually hurt my hand because I had it too close to the uh, oh really power washer at one point and it power washed my hand could we power wash the brick yes I did power wash the brick oh yeah even where the pigeons were yes that's exact that was the first thing I did (laughs) I bet we had pigeons and they made a mess of our stone of our brick wall Mm -hmm. so I I cleaned it all up and then I applied the wash first there's like a soapy wash that you put and you have to scrub it in a a little solution right solution yeah and I scrubbed it in with a brush that had a bristly end to it and we have the interesting thing is we have our deck which is wood and then we have three walls that are also wood Mm -hmm. so it's almost like you're doing two decks and our walls go really high up too it's a cage that a fortress that we've made in our back area truly so i scrubbed it all down i power washed it and the issue i had amanda was you need a few days of good weather in order to put the stain on right that was the issue our weather the last little bit was sunny rain sun sun rain sunny rain part rain part sun Mm -hmm. i never had a few days together of sun and you needed five what i needed was two days for the wood to be dry i needed dry wood okay and then a day of dryness to apply the stain, Mm -hmm. and then at least one full day of dryness, so no rain, for that application to cure on the wood. So four rainless days. Exactly. I think we had five. We weren't anticipating to have any. We were supposed to only have two 
rainless days. Mm-hmm. And then I woke up on the weekend and I noticed that the rain that was supposed to happen went to the next day. Oh, interesting. Which meant I had three days that I could do it. So the next morning we woke up very early, you and I, mm-hmm. and we went to our lo- local hardware store. We did. I was very tired. And it is very close to our house, which is great. Mm-hmm. Like walking distance. We hope it stays there because it's quite uh, quite an in-depth hardware store. It's not your average big box kind of hardware store. Um, it's a Canadian chain that I actually learned quite a bit about because I did some casting for them. Sure. And it's a very specific store. And they're kind of like franchisees, but each, peop- each person that owns whichever location – uh, it's not like your average big box store. That's the best I can say. It really is a small town mom and pop type of thing with each store. And each store is personalized according to the people that own it, how they want it to be. So they can be vastly different. And this one has lumber. It has a lumber yeah, mill it's, too. It's got a whole lumber yard. Yeah, yeah, lumber yard, I should say. It actually has a great name, which is New Canadians Lumber. New Canadian Lumber. New Canadian Lumber. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, if we're talking brands, then the brand I'm talking about is called Home Hardware. Um, and I I know I did a casting for them where we I just interviewed people that owned home hardwares and they told their stories. And it was actually really incredible to spend a day listening to each of them as to what they like to do and how they like to personalize it. Some sure. like ours is very lumber, obviously. Lumber forward. L- very lumber forward and nails and, and all of that type of equipment. And obviously stain is there, too. But some are very much like home decor. So it it really depends on the person who owns it. Yeah, there's no decor in this one. No, not at all. It's all business. It is all business. I think it services, I would argue, it probably services a lot of the building and development that happens in this area, particularly with condos and so on. Oh, so many contractors use this this home hardware, this hardware store. We hope it never goes away. We hope it never goes away. The grocery store across the street that I loved is no longer it's becoming a condo and I was sad about it but I won't talk about it anymore because I need to get back to the stain okay so we go in there and we look at the stains that are available mm-hmm. and I was under the impression that Amanda wanted a clear stain because <laughs> five years ago when we did the deck mm-hmm. you wanted a clear stain yeah I don't like a lot of color painty looking stains but so, the truth is, even a clear stain is not a clear stain. Even a cl- I've learned this time around, even a clear stain has color to it. Yeah, it, it it brings forward the colors in some of the wood. Some woods are more pale. Some woods are more red. And this, this particular stain did have a yellowy. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it, has it has a yellowy a, tinge to yeah, it. it has a, and even though it's called natural, mm-hmm. I guess as, as wood and people age, they get a yellowy tinge to them. Absolutely. So, so anyways, we decide on, well, we, I thought we were going to use water-based stain. Mm-hmm. And the gentleman who was assisting us, and I have to say, at this particular hardware store, they know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's not like the big box store where you have young people who've never painted a doghouse, let alone stained a deck. This mm-hmm. person has stained many decks, decks in his uh, day. And so he advised us. To use a oil-based stain. Mm-hmm. And he had to climb a ladder, and he only had three pails of it, and we bought two pails. And then he said, you can only put this on with a brush, and I was certain we could put it on with a, what would you call that thing I used, Amanda? Not a roller, but a long-handled uh, sponge brush thing. Chamois, yeah, chamois type. It's almost like the end of a broom. You know, it's like if you've ever been curling, the curling brooms that they use. But that's a broom, isn't it? Or no? Oh, yeah. But it's not a broom with bristles, right? Yeah, Yeah, it has a soft bottom. And so... A soft bottom broom. A soft bottom broom. It's a beautiful song, I think. By Queen. From the 70s. (laughs) By Queen. No, so (laughs) he wouldn't sell us the soft bottom broom, but I was fine. I I bought the brush... We bought two cans. Well, it's not that he wouldn't. They didn't have it. And also he told us we didn't need it. He kept saying, you you can't 
stain with that. Also, they didn't ha- they didn't sell them. I don't think they probably didn't have them. No, I right. didn't. Anyway, so we come home, and I start staining the walls. Would you call them walls? Yeah, the deck walls. The yeah. deck walls. And I asked Amanda, I said, you're going to go to the big box store and get me the curling broom that I need so that my work on the deck floor is easier. Mm -hmm. So Amanda went to a party first. What? Oh, yeah, that's true. A party for Nitty. It was her birthday. It was Nitty's birthday. Happy birthday, Nitty. Yeah. So I forgot about that. Which Uh, was an interesting party because it was a... It was a yard... It was, she was having a yard sale on her birthday and, uh, and so she just asked people to come by and, and drop by, say hi, buy something, wish her happy birthday. That's what she was doing. So I, are we talking about this? Yeah, I, you can. I went and got a cake at my favorite bakery, which is part of a grocery store, but it actually is a really great bakery part of the grocery store. Um, and I don't know if I told you this. I got them to write. Well, I wanted her to write "Happy Birthday, Happy <laughs> Happy Birthday, Nidhi" on it. It's a pretty easy ask. The woman there uh, was not happy about wanting me wanting her to write on the cake, even though that's what they always do. But I, anyway. So she didn't write "Happy Birthday." She stuck three. I didn't tell you this. No. She. You were so busy staining that we never talked about this. So wait a second. She didn't want to write. In icing, happy birthday, like they always do. Yeah, she only wanted to write nitty, and so she stuck. So she had these plastic things, these little like almost look like little bubble, like bubbles from a comic strip, but that you stick them in the cake and they say happy birthday. So she stuck two pink ones, and then a purple one. So it went pink, pink, purple in a row, and then she wrote nitty. She kept asking me to spell it. I did. I finally wrote it out for her. And then she um, really mangled it. The I, it was like, Nitty. like it, the I was all mangled. But I was trying to be sweet about it. So I was like, don't worry, it's fine. Knowing Nitty and thinking she'll probably laugh anyway. And then I said, sorry, can can you maybe change it so that it's purple, pink, purple? Because right now it's pink, pink, purple. It just looks weird. <laughs> So maybe change that one. And she had a whole bowl of these things of but different colors. What are these things? I'm not following what they They're are. They're just little things you shove in a cake that say like happy little birthday. Plastic-y little plastic Little things. plastic okay. things. And because she did pink, pink, purple, like there was no, it just looked uneven. But what was she doing pink, pink, purple? Happy was pink? No, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Oh, she wanted to put it in three times. She put it in three times. She didn't ask. She just put it in three times and where, where happy birthday would have been written. So she got out of writing happy birthday and just wrote nitty, but didn't. And she said, the icing's giving me problems. And she was really not happy with me, I think. And so then I said, sorry, can you just change that one to one of the purple ones so it can go purple, pink, purple? And she snapped at me and said, I gave you three. You're only supposed to have one. Like, I didn't want any. I wanted you to write it, but okay. And I said, I'm sorry. The woman who's here usually writes it out. And she goes, yes, yeah, she's not in today. I'm not, I'm not good at this. So then I felt bad for her. And I thought, well, it's just a cake and Nitty will like it. So anyway, I What color it. did she write the word Nitty, uh, the name Nitty? Pink. She okay. said she started it, wrote the N and then yelled, she's a girl, right? And I was like, yeah. And then she continued on with the pink. But anyway. Although the color wouldn't matter. No, exactly. I bet this person thought it was for a kid's birthday and not an adult's birthday. But what difference does that make? It doesn't. But okay. So what did Nitty say when she saw her name? She laughed and said, it's not so mangled. And she's being polite about it. She's great like and, that. And uh, it was a good looking cake. Otherwise, it was sort of had like a rainbow thing on the side. And Did it taste good? That's what really I didn't have was. any. So I don't oh. know. She put it in the fridge. It okay. was like 11 o'clock in the morning. So well, fair enough. It's, a, it's a bit early. For and day. Nitty was into the rosé at that point. So um, we had a good time. I met some friends. And I did maybe 20 minutes there, and then off to the hardware store I went. Too early for cake, 
but not too early for rosé <laughs> is what I'm getting from this story. In the world of Nidikana. Anyway. Uh, I just want to say a side note. She just got back from Ho- Copenhagen, by the way. I know. I, I can't wait she to She went on her. a spur-of-the-moment trip to Copenhagen. You'll have to get her to come back and tell everybody about it. Okay, so Nidhi is one of the best people to have a drink with mm-hmm. and to have multiple drinks with. Mm-hmm. She's even better like she's the person. If you're like, I want to go out for a couple of drinks. Nidhi is the person. She's a great person that to have a drink you, with. That yeah. that is my number one person to do that with. She's, she's a great person where you can just, even if I haven't seen her in a year, we can pick up where we left off. She's, and yeah. uh, she's got a great sense of humor. Everyone knows this though because they're fans yeah. of the podcast. And was her mom there? She was. Oh, okay. And her mom actually wants to get involved in background acting background work for films and tv so then afterwards i made a whole list for nitty of places she can sign her mom up and for representation extra work yeah extra work yeah so we'll see her mom walking by an important scene sometime soon they'd they'd be lucky to have her She'd be great. Say, so fantastic I, so she said tell my mom about what a day on set would be like for her so i walked her through what that would be like such an elegant and attractive woman yeah and, they'd be and lucky she, to have her. she was she very excited and thought that sounds nice and i just told her to bring a book mm-hmm. and uh, i think she'd have a great time well happy birthday Nidhi. i need to go out for drinks with you for your birthday because i was staining a deck so after the birthday party amanda went to a big box store to get me the broom the soft broom handle thing, whatever the we called it. The curling broom. Round bottom broom. Sure. Is that what we called it? It's actually flat. It's a flat bottom broom. Uh, yeah, it's flat, but it has like fuzzy on it. Like a chamois. Like a like a lamb's wool chamois. Okay. I don't think a lamb's wool chamois is a thing though, is it? I think it is. Well. I think it is. Okay. Well, whatever. Anyway, so I'm staining the wall. You come home. And what am I doing? I don't remember. You don't? Well, I was staining the wall, but I think I had gotten the second coat almost yeah. halfway through. It was taking a long time. Yeah. And then you had gotten, and I had asked you. I to, brought you a coffee. You had, Amanda had brought me and a, a coffee. And a sandwich. And a sandwich. And I told you to pick up the third and last can of paint because I was worried Right. Two cans weren't enough. So I went back to the hardware store. And how did they treat you when you went back? Uh, well, you had bought too many of one thing, so I had to do a return. Right. So the, the paint was easy to find. He had put it, it was the last can, but he had put it on a lower shelf. So I went back and found it immediately and snatched it up. And then it's like he knew we were going to come back. I didn't talk to him. He walked by me, but I didn't talk to him. I had actually bought inserts, plastic inserts that you can put in the tray that you used to paint with. And I went to grab them and I didn't realize because they were they were all kind of inside each other that I had grabbed five packs of inserts which come in packs of three. What's funny I, is I realized it, but I thought, well, he just needs a lot. No, I, 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 would, I would probably never go through all those packs. It's I just thought lot. that's how they came in those large packs. Mm-hmm. So Amanda went back and returned four packs of and inserts. And then they didn't know. And then she said, you have to go to this other counter to return. So I went and I wasn't really paying attention. I was watching the CP24 newsreel, which is a thing in our city. And then I went back and said, okay, here's my return. And she said, you only returned one. There's, there's three there. So then... She yelled over to the woman, and the woman said, oh, I didn't see that there were three. And I said, neither did my husband. That's hence me returning them, and I guess I didn't pay attention. So then I had to do the second return and finally get that credit against the can of paint. The thing that's disappointing is this hardware store no longer takes the points that we used to get from the points card that they used to take. That's okay. Whatever keeps them in business, I'm fine. I want them to stay there. So if if that was a pain in their butt, then... They can get rid of it. If we, nobody was getting a free flight for, I shouldn't say that. Maybe they were, but, but tons of people were. I'm sure. Well, anyway, contractors are spending thousands of dollars at that place. No, that's well. Maybe that is why. Maybe perhaps you're right. Maybe the folks at the uh, aeroplan said enough is enough. Anyway, so Amanda <laughs> comes back with all the materials I need, and I stain the deck. It was a day of errand fetching for me, which suited me fine. And I do two coats, and the wood was just drinking that mm-hmm. stain up like like nobody's business. It needed it. 
And so I knew I had one full day plus the half day after I finished painting or staining of sun Mm -hmm. or of no rain. Right. And I had painted ourselves in because we have a front porch that's wood too. He said to me, okay, I'm painting us in for the night. And then I had this thought of like, do we have butter? Do we have milk? Do we have, are we going to be okay? Are you going to make We're a locked cake? in. Yeah. <laughs> no, all these things that I would never normally even, I don't even use butter on the daily or anything. But So I painted us in and we were in for the night. And I was so exhausted from painting. Mm-hmm. My hand was crampy. My knees were sore because at some points I would have to go on my knees to you go hard. Over, over the spots that the flat-bottomed broom did not get. They make the rockin' world go, go around. around. Yeah, they certainly do. So then we went to bed. The next day, we went to our friend's house. I got up at 7 to just finish. There was a couple of spots I needed to do. We went to our friend's house. No, it, we didn't go to our friend's house. We went to the, the museum. We went to the museum. We went to the AGO. Do we have time to talk about that? Oh, we're, we're approaching, we'll just quickly say we, we took friends to the AGO, the Ontario Art Gallery, and we mm-hmm. saw some beautiful art with them, and it was a delightful afternoon. We decided to become members and yet again. We, I'll say it again. I love libraries. I particularly love the Toronto Public Library because they offer their patrons tickets to see galleries and various museums in the city. They have only so many for each library, but if you go there and you say, do you have any tickets available, with your library card, you can take out tickets to the AGO. So I had two tickets to the AGO, one for myself and one for yourself, and you have to present, they're called MAP tickets, that stands for something, I don't mm-hmm. know exactly what. You present it MAP to- MAP pass. MAP pass, yeah. You present it to the person, and you have to show your library card, they scan both, mm-hmm. and then they give you tickets. And Matt and Mel came with us, and we we had a delightful time. We had a beautiful brunch. Then we went there to our, at the AGO. At the AGO, uh, it's a prefix brunch, which is very exciting for only thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. It was it was lovely, it's really good. And then we went to our fr- at a different friend's house, and we sat on their on their front porch. Well, no, we didn't. That's not a porch. What's that called? That's the front yard. Front yard. The sorry. garden. That's their garden. It's the museum. Map pass stands for the museum and arts pass. Thank you. So I guess yeah. it's not a map pass, but they call it a map pass. But pass it's, is the P in map, but yeah, whatever. Because then it would be a map. But that's like saying. Uh, a pass pass. ATM machine. True. It's the same thing. Anyway. I say bank machine. I've always said bank machine. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. No, it's a front yard because their deck is just. It's now a, anyways, it's a, it's like a, it's more of a deck than it is, or it's more of a yard than it is a deck. True. And it's beautiful yeah. too. Anyway, so we come home. Semantics. Once again, I stain us in because I had to do the second coat on the last porch. And the next day called for rain and it did not rain. It didn't. So I had two full days, including today, which would make the third day of no rain. Mm-hmm. And of course, when you stain a deck, you have to take all your furniture from off, take it off your deck and put it somewhere. Mm-hmm. And we brought it into the home and we had no room on our first floor because it was all. It was, pl- it was a jungle of plants and deck furniture. And patio furniture. Yeah, all of it. So much everywhere. So this morning, Amanda and myself, this time Amanda was helping me. Brought all, brought all the furniture and plants out. And then Amanda took over and she decided where everything went. And it looks great. Yeah. Oh, I should say I borrowed the ladder from our neighbor, Ina, mm-hmm. because we have a chandelier that we hang on our tree. It's true. And it's no longer a working chandelier. Although, to be fair, it never really worked great anyway. But I stepped on the cord and yanked it and broke. You the know, cord. I don't even think that's why. I I think it just was done. It 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 it, it owes us nothing. It really. owes us. We got it for twenty five dollars at the Habitat for Humanity Restore, and it was an outdoor chandelier. So it was an LED thing, and it was a little chain that you pull, but the chain is now rusted, so there's no chain. 
So no more LED. So we hang it on our tree, Mm -hmm. which is a Norwegian maple. And uh, we did that. A Norway maple. A Norway maple. Thank you. It would make more sense if it was called a Norwegian maple, but for whatever reason, it's called a Norway maple. Which is not a native species. No. Controversial. Yeah. It's a little controversial. So then Amanda put all the furniture out, Mm -hmm. all the plants out, and I went to go buy mint to put in a planter today. And then I went to work, and now we're here recording. Yeah, that's our day. And I, you know what I did? I was watching a soothing show, not House Hunters, but a British sort of version of that. What what show were you watching? Escape to the Continent. Yes. Love it. And thought, you know, I never sleep, I never take a nap on the couch. You are able to take a nap on the couch easily at certain times of the day. I cannot for whatever reason, but it's a very luxurious thing to nap on the couch, but you were gone. And I'm not used to having the house to myself. And I started to fall asleep and I put it on a fireplace channel and fell asleep for two hours. Just the crackling of the fireplace and the the sun, like I didn't even close the curtains or anything. Oh, you had the sun, the sun was still In playing. my face, yeah, oh, wow. but I just fell asleep. Maybe the sun felt like the fire reflection Maybe. off your face with Maybe. the sounds of crackling fire. At one point, I even moved over to the other side of the couch half asleep with a pillow and I just was out and I f- finally woke up and... So I didn't get much work done tonight, but that's well, okay. I hope our voices were like the sounds of a crackling fire. And I hope my adventures in sustaining a deck have at least made you feel calm and relaxed. And who knows, maybe it even helped you find sleep. Until the next time, I'm Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. And we hope you were able to listen and sleep. Sleep.